Hello friends, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at classicstoday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room, and our room overfloweth. Oh my goodness. Um, we're in the W's, still we're in the W's, with some really cool and interesting stuff that somehow found its way down here. First, oh, let me get this pack, a lot of CPO in this particular, this particular chat. Ricard Vetz. Ricard Vetz, who lived from 1875 to 1935. Now, Ricard Vetz, I've reviewed this stuff pretty thoroughly on classicstoday.com with some sound samples, I believe, um, if you want to hear it. And I've talked about him, I think, here as well. He was a Bruckner wannabe. Boy, oh boy, was he a Bruckner wannabe. If you know your Bruckner, you're going to like Ricard Vetz. He wrote how many symphonies? One, two, three symphonies. And then there are some other additional pieces. He could be extraordinarily tedious. Um, and if you think Bruckner was tedious, wait, you hear vets. I'm not saying that Bruckner is necessarily tedious, but some people think that, you know, the nerve, right? You know, and people who imitate tedium are going to be even more of that. So, you know, you should just be forewarned. I, I enjoy these pieces. I really do. But they do sound so derivative. It's so funny. My God, he had not an original thought in his brain. And that's kind of fun sometimes to hear. It really is. And CPO did a whole four disc so far edition of his stuff. You get his symphony number no. three in the Gesang des Lebens, the song of life. Ugh. And we have symphony number no. two and his Kleist Overture which is a total snoozeroo, 16 really dull minutes. But the symphonies are cool. They're fun. I mean, you know, if you know what the style is of the school and where it's coming from. And then we have his symphony number no. one, which is just symphony number no. one. These are with different people. One is here is with the Krakow Philharmonic, um, Krakow, which is actually where my, my part of my family was from, not the Hurwitzes, my mother's side, from Schadburg, a wonderful town sort of near Krakow in Poland. Um, having fled there from Spain, believe it or not. We know where the family came from. Anyway, under Roland Bader, and we have, let's see, the Staatsphilharmonie Rhineland Pfalz, under Werner Andreas Albert, doing a couple of these things, while well, doing all the rest of it. And there's also, what was this, the Violin Concerto. Um, the Violin Concerto is in four movements, lasting 30 minutes, and his his Traumsommernacht, his dream summer night thing and hyperion for baritone mixed choir and orchestra another snoozeroo anyway there he is ricard vetz knock yourself out down then after vetz we have are these all in alphabetical order i think they sort of are well kind of uh egon Veles. now Veles, we talked about i you know we, we mentioned him before he wrote nine symphonies um, and most of them, all of them actually, are right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, on Hyperion with, let's see, Gottfried Robel and the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra. Very, very fine performances, quite well recorded. These have all been reviewed on classicstoday.com, so I don't, oh, here we go again. So I don't have to, hello, Finster, so I don't have to repeat myself excessively. Um, they're very, very interesting. Uh, they are in a post malarian mostly tonal, slithering into atonal idiom. And you, you can't get up there. Don't even try. Look, honey. Okay. So, I mean, they are, they, they, you know, how well you're going to like them will depend on how much you like the post Wagner and post malarian more chromatic idiom. I mean, it's very, very interesting. He was a very solid craftsman. Um, some of these pieces have held up better than others. And not necessarily the earlier ones, I, you know, where he's more, more normally tonal. You know, he likes funeral marches, he likes, but he's not, he doesn't have the Malarian sense of irony or humor. These are neoclassical symphonies in the sense that they tend to be brief and well-proportioned. And somebody's meowing. And uh, I'm sorry about the cats, folks. I really am, but they're they're kittens still, and they're they're just you know uppity. And then we have this wonderful opera, the 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 Bacca, the the Bacantin, and then and then and then and then 
die Bekantinnen. You know, they're, the Bekants are female, so they're female Bekants and things. Um, it's got Dionysius and Teresius and, and, and King Agave and Panthea and Penteus and all kinds of like Greek people. Um, this is a performance, this is on Orfeo with Gerd Albrecht, who does lots of unusual repertoire. It's falling out. There we go. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So Veles is a guy, I think, who's worth hearing. Um, I do, but you know, the extent to which you're going to take to it and want to repeat it, I don't know. That's why he's in the overflow room, because I haven't made up my mind. You know, I gotta give it some time and, and see how it uh, evolves in my own musical education. And then we have, forget the, you know, crazy composer stuff, this fabulous Masterworks Heritage. Remember Masterworks Heritage? When it came out, they were beautifully remastered by Seth Winner, I think, did most of these things. Um, and they were wonderful. And this is Luba Velich, the great Bulgarian soprano. Her big deal was Salome. Oh my goodness, with Fritz Reiner. Yeah, that must have been something to see live. She did, she did a really good, here she is, look at that. There she is with the head of John the Baptist looking young and voluptuous and aptly nymphomaniacal. Really wonderful. She had a lovely voice and these are her complete Columbia recordings. Music by Strauss, the final scene from Salome, the four last songs. And then Mozart, Puccini, Brahms, Strauss, Schubert, Schumann, Mahler. I mean, you can get a complete Reiner Salome with her. It's, it's, it's out there somewhere. I think I have it actually. Um, you know, it was a, a air check pirate thing, I think, for the most part. And uh, let's see, yes. So, I mean, she had the Mahler Rucker leader. I mean, all kinds of cool stuff here. She was, she was a character. She was like the Lucille Ball of opera singers. I mean, she had flaming red hair and she was, she was really supposed to have a very, a very, very, oh, how shall we say, gushing personality. And, you know, Salome has to gush, and she does. So, yeah, this is fine. She looks quite very serious there. I like this much, much, much better. I mean, you know, yeah, go for it, honey. So, Luba Valich, and there you have it. Three W's. Ripe for reissue. No, not ripe for reissue. Random reviews. What's these RR titles? I'm getting them mixed up. From the Overflow Room. Keep on listening, friends, and thanks for joining me. Take care.